Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew. Lord Glory Lord to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. He came from Galilee to John and Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. When Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. <clears throat> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Have you ever at any point in your life been, been accused of being a radical? I dare say that most of us wouldn't like it if it ever happened because radicals we consider to be extremists, to say the least. Now, we do tend to think of radicals in political terms first, and, you know, really in, in a political area such as this, things are supposed to be. See, I'm, I'm not surprised at that. But we think that radicals are ultra liberal, even revolutionary. Today's time, though, we think that some Democrats, just being a Democrat, makes one a radical. Do you realize that the founding fathers of this nation, the founding leaders, were indeed revolutionary radicals? They literally went to war to seek freedom and to seek self-determination. They created, yes, a radical form of government unlike anything else that had been seen in the world before. And in that declaration of independence, they said, if this new way we envision, this way of government doesn't work, then start over again. It is the people's right to do such a thing. Now, now, to be honest, radicals can also be ultra-conservative. We call those radicals reactionary. And then religious radicals, they're thought to be fanatics sometimes. Religious radicals are thought to be subversive. They want to tear down all the traditions that we have. And we counter that today. Oh yeah, John the Baptist is nothing. It's not radical. He is radical in his choice for God, radical in his choice for the good and the right. He is radical in his choice for people over religion and religious tradition. Earlier, we encountered John uh, a few weeks ago on the first Sunday of Advent. And earlier, John had the audacity to call the religious leaders poisonous snakes. He said, You threw the vipers. Who warned you to flee from the wrath of God? And earlier, John said, I baptize you with water, but the Holy Spirit and fire is, is on its way to you. And it is to this radical that Jesus turns to begin his new path of life. And John's baptism is nothing if not radical. He is saying to anyone who would listen that your current traditions and your customs have gotten you nowhere. It's time to start over again, to wash away that shell of a useless life. You need to be baptized. So then Jesus steps forward to take the plunge, literally, the plunge in the waters of the Jordan River. And what Jesus is, does is quite unconventional for, for an expected Messiah, and that is to be baptized, first of all, to be baptized by John. He does this because this is to be a clean break with his past. He's no longer a carpenter, no longer will be a resident of Nazareth by his baptism. He is putting himself in the hands of God for something entirely new. And even John recognizes the audacity. John says, I need to be baptized by you. Now, if Jesus is willing to be so unconventional and even radical, consider that God may be this way too. Jesus shows us <coughs> God who takes the expected and the ordinary, and surprises us with the unexpected in an extraordinarily unconventional way to move forward with God in the world. You have heard this, I have it. 
every significant person <coughs> with a single step. And by virtue of our baptism, step by step, we will discover where and to whom God is leading us. So with that in mind, I want you to consider that your baptism is your liberation. Consider that the vows that you will renew today to be your freedom into that new way. And in baptism, what is done by you is as important, if not more so, than what is believed by you. This new way of Jesus is a calling to a higher righteousness. In baptism, we join hands with Jesus to do what is good, to do what is right, and to do what is just. Now, who cannot help but feel some fire when we hear those words and say them with our hearts today? It was the impulsively human Peter, the one affectionately nicknamed Rocky by Jesus. Yes, that's what that's what Cephas in the Aramaic means. Cephas means rock, or more appropriately, Rocky. Well, Rocky has this to say about sometime after the resurrection of Jesus when he is proclaiming the heart and the soul of the way of Jesus. Peter says, I believe that God shows no partiality and that everyone, everywhere, who fears him and does what is right is acceptable. Everyone, everywhere, acceptable. What a radical thing to say. Because in baptism, we are much more than acceptable. We are declared and chosen as God's beloved. The vows we renew today set us apart for this radical new way of Jesus. Now, of course, baptism does not protect us from this from this, this crazy, sometimes dangerous world. But if baptism in Jesus means anything, it means that you make the Spirit of God real in that world that we face. So no, following Jesus does not happen in a pristine, perfect world. Following Jesus does not mean that we only follow Jesus in the church. It means we have to follow Jesus out of church, into the world, and into the, into the world where we live and work. Following Jesus happens in real life, and you are the one that are to make that difference. So the promises that you make are radical, to say the least. The baptismal vows bring to life Jesus' greatest commandment. That is to love God with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your heart, and with your strength. Love your neighbor as God already loves your neighbor. Love yourself as God already loves you. We will stand and we will say that yes, we do believe in God. That we will continue in the way of Jesus. That we will never stop resisting evil. And that we will proclaim, we will proclaim the good news of God in word and deed. We will say that we will seek Christ and respect the dignity of every person. Not just some people, but every human being. We will stand and say yes to the radical way of Jesus. So, it is true then that the baptism of Jesus is for us. And it is also for us to know that Jesus is the beloved of God. It is for us to know that Jesus would stand with John the Baptist in the muddy waters of the Jordan River. And that Jesus will stand with us in the muddy, occasionally dangerous life we live. What God shows us in Jesus is the radical, but passionate, longing love of God for every humanity, for every human being, and for all of humanity. And that there is no limit to God's love for anyone. And it is for God's people everywhere. Baptism is only the embodiment of that radical, all-inclusive love and acceptance. So today, we stand once again and say yes. Yes to the all-inclusive, unconditional love of God in Jesus. Amen.
Lord, look down.